I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions. Today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your MailChimp customer journeys to Slack directly and for free using webhooks. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and a little thank you in the comments to help other people find it as well. I do have a blog post on my website that includes step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this, as well as some links and code that you're going to need. I will link that below. And now let me take you through how to do it. The way that webhooks work is they're going to take some of your customer data, depending on what you pick, what merge fields you pick, and they're going to send them as a post into Slack for you. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that those fields have a default in MailChimp. Um, if they're blank, it won't send at all. So we're going to head right over to our audience. We're going to go here to settings, merge fields. And we're just going to make sure that whatever information we want sent over, if there isn't something there, let's say phone number here, right? We're going to put no phone. Now keep in mind, these are the same merge tags that you may be using in your emails. So here I have first name. That's probably not the best, right? Friend or something like that instead. And then we're going to hit save. Over here in your customer journey, you're going to decide when the information is going to be sent to Slack. And that's going to depend on how you're using this. Maybe you're going to have an if then statement and if someone opens it, then it will send. Or just for the sake of what we're doing, we're going to tag someone and then it'll get sent. So right now I'm going to click on the web hooks block right here. I'm going to name it. Okay. And you'll see that it's looking for a URL. This is what we're going to get from Slack. So we need to set things up on the Slack side. Again, I have all of the information for that on my blog. So let's flip over to there. Here we go. If we scroll down, we're going to create an app in Slack by clicking here. Here we go. We're going to do it from scratch. We're going to name it. This name is actually what will pop up like on your phone when you get a new um, import like this, when you get a new post like this. So it's important that you name this in line with that. You're going to pick where it's going. We're going to create it. Now we are going to pick incoming webhooks and turn it on. If we scroll down here, we're going to add a new webhook to our workplace. Again, now we're going to choose what channel it goes into. Allow. And it will give us that URL that we need. So we're going to copy that and put it back into MailChimp. Here we are. We're going to put it right here. Bink. All right. So this URL is how the information is going to be sent into Slack. When you put this in here, make sure that you save it. And then we're going to go ahead and do our code. This is how we tell it what fields are going to be sent over. And again, we're going to head to the blog for this. All right, so we've set everything up in Slack. We're going to scroll down here. I have a tutorial about how to edit this code and I gave it to you. So first you're going to go over here to download the code. It's a CSV file right here, a CSV. We're just going to save it to our computer. We're going to head over here and we're going to import it into this editor. So we're going to go up here, import CSV, select it, Scroll down, just import. Don't click on anything. All right. It's putting us into table view, but we're actually going to start in tree view. The code itself is made up into blocks and each block will be a line when it gets into Slack. So right here, I have this block. You'll see they're numbered. This one zero is some text, text at the top of each entry. This one here is F name and L name. So that's first name space last name. And that's how it will be entered into Slack. And this third one here is email. Let me show you again the example of how that turns out in Slack, right? So here's the text at the top of the entry, which we can edit, of course. 
and then first name, last name, and then an email. So this is the code as I've given it to you. If you don't need all of these fields from this view, this tree view here, you're just going to hit delete on one of those sections that you highlight by the number. And if you wanted to add a section, you would again highlight that block of the number. You would copy and you see how that parentheses is the last highlighted one. You go just below it and paste. And there we go. Now it's number two. All right. So in number two here, if we want to change the code itself, now you're going to flip over to this text view and this will be a lot easier to change the text. This headline here is what shows up at the top of every entry. So it helps distinguish one entry from the next, which is why I have these asterisks next to it. Just makes it easier to see. Then I have first name, last name. Okay, maybe I want to switch this one to email. Oh, and I had phone number in our example, right? So let me switch back to tree. I'm going to again, copy and go right below that one. Paste, there we go. Flip back over to text and write phone. Okay, now I'm going to select all of this, copy, paste it into here, paste. We can do a preview and pick a contact and it will show you how it's going to fill things in. There's the name, there's the email address. So we know that, oh, and for phone number, when it didn't have something, it's going to say no phone, which was the default that we put in there. And then you're good to turn it on. So that automation is on. I tagged one of my contacts so that it would go into that automation. Keep in mind, sometimes MailChimp takes a minute or two for things to process all the way through. Oh, and there it is. So you'll see here that what we named that app when we were setting up the Slack from MailChimp is what shows up first. Then the text heading that I added, the name, first name, last name, the email, and then that default for the field that we didn't have. If you do end up having questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to see other things as well, I'm always taking ideas for new videos. And if this was helpful to you, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, give me a thank you in the comments so that other people can find it as well.